Friday afternoon, February the 3rd, uh, and I'm really excited to meet this afternoon's sofa guest because we met uh, a couple of weeks ago on my Saturday breakfast show, um, and I was hearing about his phenomenal fundraising achievements. Not only did I hear how he'd made thousands of pounds for Alzheimer's Research UK, a charity close to his heart, but I got an insight into the world of gaming as well and the gaming community because Paul, uh, also known as Running Man's, is a professional gamer and joins me now pro gamer i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> well that's what it said yeah. <laughs> i don't think anybody that watches me would consider me a pro gamer to oh. be honest <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming in it's really lovely to to meet you in person yeah you too lucked out with the song choice as well yeah. bit of pulp your favorite yeah they are they are yeah, yeah there you go it's almost as if i knew i didn't know I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know tell me a bit about what it means to be a gamer well uh, to be a gamer is just to enjoy gaming as a hobby i guess loads of people do it it's the biggest kind of media industry now on the planet like bigger than music bigger than films like there's more people playing games and buying games than there are people going to the cinema or watching but for me personally i turn that into what you might call vague entertainment <laughs> <laughs> so when we talk games we're not talking a bit of guess who we're talking computer video games. games yeah video, video games. games so i play pc games with a mouse and a keyboard i play the kind of when i was a kid i'd have considered it the old man style of gaming but pc gaming is massive now it's really really big there's loads of games that come out for pc and consoles as well i play a pc game but yeah uh, to a live audience yeah you see now i feel uh, completely clueless about all this because in my head it was uh, it's headphones and it's just a handheld controller but it's, this yeah. is actually a PC game well that's what I do yeah I, I used to play console games and uh, about well 2013 ish late 2013 I just bought a PlayStation 4 and I was playing a game called Call of Duty and the last one that had come out was COD Ghosts and I got a bit bored of it and I stumbled into some YouTube videos of a PC game that wasn't available on console and it drove me into PC gaming and then six seven months down the line I started making my own videos like the one I'd seen from Frankie on PC who was the guy that made the video that made me try the game okay and so what essentially people do as you say is watch you you live stream yourself playing a game yep um and you talk your way through it talk about yeah. tactics talk uh, well about... I, I don't know if i'm very what? good at the tactics really <laughs> it's it's really like a talk radio show what i do so it depends on the game so twitch is a massive website that's where i stream to they're yeah. a really big website that uh well in gaming mm -hmm. uh but what i do is i play a fairly slow paced game so i tend to have viewers come in they'll come in and say a few things and there's a message board that ticks through and it, it's very very quick but i try and catch the odd message and then i just to and throw with the message and just make things up it's basically 12 hours of double entendre is it yeah. right okay <laughs> and what's the game Do, are you always playing one particular uh, game i am i i'm a bit of a no-lifer so i started that game in 20 well i started streaming it in 2015 but making videos in 2014 and the game i play is daisy and i've been playing the same game ever since but uh, it's kind of my favorite game of all time it kind of worked out pretty well for me <laughs> and what is it what, what is, is it it's it's a post-apocalyptic survival game so you're basically plonked into this land yeah. and you'd start with nothing uh, just a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and then you have to try and collect things and travel around the, the map picking up food and a backpack and an axe and things like that and yeah. then guns later on and you're surviving against infected like zombies so the, the map has like zombies in it that you have to survive against and then like ai like wolves and bears and things but the main thing that happens all of that is like a sandbox for meeting other people doing the same thing so you'll meet another player and they might be I don't know, Fred from France or yeah. whatever. You know. yeah. you, so in the map, there's 60, 80, 100 players from around the world. And when you meet one of those, they can be friendly and you can team up and travel along to try and help each other or they'll try to shoot you or they'll tie and you so up and hold, this, take your things. And, and so is this where you see people chatting to each other? <laughs> well, I, that's what I would do in the game. So I, that's the gameplay. So I, I'll be talking to people in the game. Yeah. And that can be quite storied you know you can meet yeah. someone and get to know somebody uh like eagle eye steve from the other day uh, <laughs> if anybody's watching that saw the stream uh so you meet somebody and you like we you sort of travel along for three hours get to know them a little bit and then maybe they might get shot and you don't see them anymore or maybe you do you know but so you meet one person in the game or two or however it might be but the, the chatting aside from that the video game is one part which would be a bit like me well a bit like you playing music yeah 
but the other side is that at the same time the chat from the people viewing is there and i'll be toing and froing with the chat at the same time kind of spinning both plates playing the game but talking to real people that are watching the stream at the same time so how did you kind of get into all this i mean because it's 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 quite sophisticated gaming isn't it it, it is well pc gaming is compared to console gaming with the console you just buy the console plug it in your telly and yeah. away you go pc can be a bit more complex when you don't know what you're doing so i do even now i kind of stumble through it i'm not the the, the typical pc gamer i'm not a real tech geek or tech nerd i'd like to be <laughs> yeah but yeah you, there's quite a bit more to it it's not that bad though it's fairly straightforward to do the streaming side of things is really easy there's lots of software to to, to find to do it and you can stream from a, a basic laptop to start with and then try and improve your gear as you get more viewers and people tune in or you don't you know but what do you do <clears throat> so right that other people don't because they're because not everybody is a successful gamer no, are they? No. with I, people it, watching them on streams lots of people do this so there's millions of people streaming on twitch over the course of a month but not many people do it to the level that i'm at i suppose i'm in the top 250 to 350 in the world at mm. what i do which is kind of okay uh, but it's not, it's not so bad, it? <laughs> it's not bad right. uh, <laughs> for a bit of a chancer that started when i was almost middle-aged <laughs> slash uh, as, as viewers know i'm actually 38 and have been for seven years okay uh, but yeah it's not something that many people get to do but yeah it's very very much changed my life yeah it's been good and so how does it get um how does it get to be your your job your well, profession it started as a hobby i started on youtube making videos and i had uh, I, I started in july and i remember in september i bought a second hand pc and i had 21 subscribers watching i spent a grand on a second hand pc and i was like what have i done <laughs> and then as i made videos i gradually learned how to edit and people liked my voice but i think the english accent is relatively popular around the world sure. people liked my personality and they liked my voice and so people started tuning into the videos and once i've been doing that for nine ten months i kind of had a bit of a following i had about four thousand subscribers on twitch sorry on, on uh, youtube and i decided to start live stream streaming a couple mm. of times a week and that went really well i, I when i first started because i'd got a bit of a youtube following maybe 20 people would be watching but a month down the line 100 people were watching and then years down the line now 4,000 people are watching you know so it just gradually snowballs over time and and so is it sort of advertising and things is that how you would end up making yeah. money out of it on YouTube that's how it works so you make a video you release it and then if people watch it when people watch the video an advert plays and then yeah. you get a share of that advert revenue so that's how YouTube works yeah uh, and if you're getting a lot of views if you get say a million views on a video or something then the advertising revenue is very very good you're going to get quite a share you know yeah, there's a lot of eyes are seeing that advert yeah and also it's very tailored to YouTube knows how old your market is so the advert is tailored to the people mm. that are watching the video so it's very good advertising and then on twitch i subscribe and people subscribe to me so you can subscribe to my channel on twitch like people subscribe to netflix or amazon or whatever yeah. else you know any any streaming service yeah so people can choose to subscribe to me but it's free to watch so that's something they can do if they wish they don't have to it's still it's free to watch or they can sub choose to subscribe yeah. and people do i've got i don't know six and a half thousand subscribers right now uh, did you ever, did that. you you know did you see this coming did you think you you'd end up this with this is your career no no i know i was a regional manager in retail for a confectionery company uh who sell pick and mix into like cinemas and oh, supermarkets and things like that uh, and with I, that job <laughs> so, uh, yes, well, perks. Uh, well <laughs> kind of but going to a going to a yearly meeting to talk about three new sweets wasn't a great deal of fun the people in the company were great but yeah. it was a bit dull you know I, I spent 20 years doing retail and i just fell into this i started it as a hobby to sidetrack me from other things mm. and it just gradually grew so it was a hobby and it was an extension of gaming which i found fun but then I started getting really into analytics of YouTube comments and people were watching and how long they were watching for and what videos went well and what videos didn't go well. So I gradually got better and improved what I was doing and came to be here. And now you've got this fantastic following and, and people know you as the running man's. That's right. And, um, you know, it's it it must feel good. You're in a you're in a good, good place. Yeah, it does feel good. The, the nice thing about it is it's kind of small in a way it's like all in a niche on the internet that nobody knows about you mm. know like so and over the course of a month on twitch i get way more than a million viewers over mm. the course of that like I, I don't know how many people listen to the radio this channel you know mm. i don't know but if you think about the, the amount of people i just sit in my my spare bedroom <laughs> on a pc and over the course of a month more than a million different well not different people 
two or three hundred thousand people yeah. will come back regularly to to watch me play a video game it's kind of crazy really but it's crazy but it's fascinating yeah. um we'll talk more because um you your, your community the gaming community have been very much behind you with your with your fundraising uh, that you've been doing at uh, your these kind of fi big fundraising uh streams so we'll find out more about that about the reasons behind it and a lot more about you uh after this Today, my sofa guest is Paul, also known as The Running Man's. Uh, he is a professional gamer, and, and we've been hearing all about the, the, the gaming world, um, which is really interesting for someone like me that isn't in that world. <laughs> and I don't, I don't get to see that world. I mean, I could, I suppose, if I started gaming. But <laughs> um, tell us about these fundraisers that you've done, because they're for a charity very close to your heart, but I think also highlight the kind of community, that you, the gaming yeah. community. So uh, I've done a yearly charity stream every year except for the first lockdown year because a lot of people weren't working. I just mm. decided to not do one. Yeah. But when I went full time, I, I thought I'd grown uh, full time streaming. I thought I'd grown quite a following. So I started doing fundraisers and I've done them for a few different people. But the last few were for Alzheimer's Research UK. And that's close to my heart because my dad uh, suffered with dementia and ended up going into care. And he died on the 21st of January 2021. Mm. So when I spoke to you last, that was the, the anniversary, the one year anniversary of his passing. So yeah. I've done the last couple for Alzheimer's Research UK. And previously, uh, I'd done one for Macmillan uh, Cancer, Cancer Support. And that was because he'd been diagnosed with prostate cancer and he'd seen a Macmillan nurse. And so, uh, to be honest, almost in a selfish way, the charities I picked because of me, mm. but I'm relaying the passion of, as to the reasons why for those to a large audience and trying to engage them in switching on to the subject matter. And and, and that sounds like it really worked because you, I mean, these were sort of mammoth streaming sessions yeah, I, that you th raised money through. Th those, those two were... 16 hour stream so i did a 16 hour stream in december on a sunday i started at 8 a.m and finished at midnight mm. and i did the same the year before i've done longer streams in the past when i was trying to grow my channel into something that would work i did 30 hours and 40 minutes was the longest i ever did in one go my goodness uh, <laughs> which i would never do again no. <laughs> you, you, you don't walk very well for a couple of days if you sit in an office chair for 30 hours and 40 wow. minutes so no. i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it Gosh. but yeah as far as the the charity streams go i i would obviously i could share stuff about my own life and and what i was going through but the thing that you don't realize it's not something you see uh, dementia you don't see it unless somebody in your family has it there's so many people out there that have somebody that's going through the same thing and living with dementia mm. and there's lots of different stages to that but around the world the people that were watching me it felt like almost half of the people in the chat either had a grandparent or a parent that were doing or going through or had gone through the same thing so it certainly touched a lot of people that were watching which kind of gamers are just regular people the same as everyone yeah. else believe it or not yeah <laughs> not all of them have blue hair <laughs> no well, but that's the thing i think there is a certain uh, really wrongly but there is a, so a certain image associated with like the, with everything isn't there but with gaming and and i guess you wouldn't have naturally thought oh i bet they're opening up and talking about their experiences of living with no family no, and friends no. with dementia yeah and i have i do see it quite a lot through, through some of the things i talk about that i've done or problems that i've had it relates to other people and i have people that come back and talk to me about it i did a couple of fundraisers for crisis uk years ago like 2016 and 17 i think mm. off the top of my head and i've had viewers that have messaged me later on saying they were watching on their phone homeless while they were mm, tuning in on like their mobile phone where they could and then years later they were kind of on the right path and doing better and still tuning into the stream and things so it's kind of eye-opening when you talk about these things just how many people are affected by stuff around the world yeah and and so when your dad was um diagnosed with dementia was was his uh i mean did it take hold quite quickly or well uh, my dad suffered with mental illness for most of his life wow. uh, fairly seriously so and so i think the early signs of his dementia were hidden by similar symptoms mm. from what he's had in the past so it wasn't spotted early because he'd had similar symptoms for most of his life at times you know you get waves of good and bad years if you like with mental illness yeah. so uh we weren't really aware of too much that that was different until uh, maybe may 
of 2020 yeah 2020 mm. and by october he like really sort of gone downhill and was in a care home permanently like my mum was in the nhs for 40 years and was uh looking after mostly geriatric old old people that were sort of at end of life care and people that needed some help maybe they broke a hip or something mm. were staying in the nhs hospital and she'd looked after people all her life but she got to the stage where she couldn't quite look after my dad on her own anymore and right. I was he'd fall over and not be able to get up and I was having to go around actually a couple of times I had to stop a stream to go yeah. around and help him get up off the floor because dementia doesn't just affect you in terms of being a bit forgetful you can lose your motor skills and not be able to stand up or do other basic things that people just take for granted you know yeah and 2020 so that must have been hard because that must have fallen well during the pandemic yeah I uh, it, he did yeah he uh he was diagnosed i'm i'm getting my he died at, yeah 2021 so he he was struggling with it through 2020 mm. he went into a care home in october when he went into the care and we were allowed to visit but only one person and only with a pre-arranged uh time slot but it did affect him a little bit i need his brother his his elder brother john was meant to see him in december and unfortunately they had a case in the hospital in the care home he was staying in so they couldn't uh, mm. allow the visit and then he ended up in hospital on christmas eve and only came back to the care home briefly before he died so he never got to have that visit with his older brother he wouldn't have known it was coming but it yeah. would have been nice you know he, he would have still recognized him he was struggling with motor skills but he still recognized his family when we came to see him and mm. things he knew who we were it, a lot of his conversations weren't exactly correct in like what he was saying and he was getting the bus to manchester later on that day and yeah. things but he recognized everyone which was lovely and he always had a smile on his face uh but it was a shame that he didn't get to see his brother before he before he passed for his brother and and for him yeah, and uh, yeah the, the last week as well he uh he had covid which he actually contracted in the hospital so for the last week after he, he went in, he went in with sepsis and his temperature was something like 32 degrees or something mm. silly. Uh, and he wasn't conscious anymore, but because he was COVID positive, my mum, my sister and me had to sit by his bed in full suits with the visor and the mask and yeah. the, the apron and everything, which was uh, different. Yeah. And do you did you find uh, the, the leaving, you know, when you when you'd visited or or go, coming away that you, you would then go back to your gaming and and because oh, in my head I've, i kind of think of gaming as being a bit of a solitary thing to do but then having spoken to you it seems like quite the opposite so well, what, what i do is did you solitary, find you're no. supported yeah. by yeah, people yeah. And I, when i have something like a major thing that goes on in my life unless it's like a silly argument over nothing in in the house which me and jill never have obviously <laughs> love you <laughs> but something like that i'll keep to myself mm. but uh if if it's something like that I, I won't share like really personal details but i'll i'll have an overview or visit my dad and it was this or that or what was the highlight what was the low light and things and share that with other people you know and, and it does it does sort of help i think the the awareness of these things helps lots of people you know mm. i get quite a lot of messages uh, we might talk about gambling later but i've had a mess messages in private from viewers from maybe maybe close to 50 or maybe more people that are addicted to gambling and mm. and message me for what what might they might do as a first step and the same questions in the chat while i'm streaming all the time you know like by talking about things that i've gone through other people going through the same thing you know I, i've reached out and hopefully maybe move forward i don't know yeah uh we'll we'll talk a bit more about how how gaming helped you kind of escape hmm. uh your your problems with gambling we'll, we'll have a bit of a uh, travel news and then we'll be right back and my sofa guest this afternoon is Paul, who's also known as The Running Man. He's a professional gamer, professional streamer, and we've been chatting uh, about that whole world and about these incredible fundraisers that you've done for Alzheimer's Research UK as well. How, what was your total that you raised? This, this year was 31,500-ish pounds, and the yeah. year before was more. So I think it's around 72,000 in total for the last two streams. Uh, I, I don't know about the other, I'm well over 100,000, maybe 120,000 pounds, in, including other things in the past as well, I'd say. That's a, such an amazing amount of money and, and just shows how much support there is for in the in the gaming community yeah. we, we were talking about one of the things that that uh gaming has done for you and that's to steer you away from um well a, an addiction you, yeah. you had a gambling addiction well i have an addictive personality mm. so i get if i get interested in something i can 
I can really focus on that and not much else. Maybe I get like hyper focus or whatever. And uh, I managed to get hyper focused on YouTube and the analytics of why people choose to watch my video or what videos do well, who hits the like button or how many and what videos do well. But that that kind of occupied my brain and took me away from trying to study horse form and work out what horse was going to win because I did have some serious issues with gambling yeah mm. I was I was an addicted gambler I was a recreational gambler gambler for like 10 plus years I'd say maybe 20 uh, but when I got to my mid 30s it became a problem and it was no longer a bit of fun and it was well the worst I, I ever did I uh, I gambled my entire month's salary two days before the bills were going to come out <gasps> So I had my month's salary that just went into my bank and two days later I had to pay the bills for the month, half the mortgage and everything else. And I gambled the, the whole month. Do you remember the pro... Uh, I mean, I guess uh, if you knew 100% then you wouldn't... No one would have a gambling problem ever. But do you remember the process going on in your brain? Because there must have been a part of you saying don't do it. Yeah, uh, I, I think... It's, it's weird things with regards to a gambling addiction, but what I used to bet on outsiders mostly in horses and I'd back a horse at 50 to 1 to win and it would lose by a short head yeah. and I'd feel like I was right. Mm. And then I'd be like, well, if it had won, I'd have won, let's say, 50 pounds if I'd had a pound yeah. on, but I probably had a lot more on. Yeah. You know? uh, and so you feel like you're so you get all these near misses and it, you're like, well, one of these near misses is going to land in a minute. And usually at some point they do. Yeah. But then what you do with the winnings is gamble it again because you think, well, I've just won thousands. I, I could make that into more thousands. And then you end up with less money. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a serious thing. Yeah. A gambling addiction is really horrible. It, I had a little look, not recently, but I was looking uh, at the subject came up when I was streaming. They reckon there's about 500 or so thousand addicted gamblers in the UK right now. But most people walking around with that are just carrying it with them on their own. Nobody knows. Nope. Their wife or husband might not know or their partner mm. or their mum or whatever. Normally, they're just carrying it on their own, struggling with it. I remember one night uh, putting my daughter Sophie to bed. Uh, it was that that day. And I put her to bed and I was crestfallen. I didn't know what I was going to do the next day. You know, I had no idea. Mm. Uh, like you just like it's such a strange thing because I'm talking about it now. It's like I'm talking about another person. Yeah. But in the moment, you have no idea how you end up getting to that point, you know. And gaming just gave you another focus. Is yeah. That well, how it helped? I, I, I took a I, I kind of realized that it was only going to end one way you know it causes a lot of serious issues suicide yeah. included a lot of lot of men in particular commit suicide because of gambling addiction yeah. uh but I, I i realized that i was only going one way with it so i admitted to my uh, now ex-wife and uh, parents that i had this problem and then i kind of just tried to put it to bed but I do have an addictive personality, so I found another addiction, and that was YouTube. I, they corresponded. You know, it might be that without YouTube, I would have become a gambler again. I, I, I don't even know what horse races this weekend. I would have known the name of every horse, the weight the jockey was carrying, and the yeah. form, and what races it had won, and what course it liked, if it liked left or right-handed bend. And uh, I would have known all of that, but now I don't have a clue. And I, I turned that part of my brain into studying analytics for YouTube and focusing on other things that were much more positive and it was more of a hobby. I didn't think it would make me any money, but within about, well, I started making YouTube videos on July the 29th, 2014. And then in May, 2016, I went full time. So less than two years later, it was my full time job. And well, thank goodness for it because <laughs> yeah. And, and what do you, what about, do you still do it as a hobby? Uh, no. What gaming? Yeah. No, I don't. No, no. no. I, I I really like gaming, but I I mostly enjoy PC gaming. I haven't played a console since I switched to doing what I do now, mm. and because I play the PC game in an office, which is a bit like a studio. Now, this, the equipment's quite nice, <laughs> and I I sit in there and I I do five days a week now. I used to do six, but I do five days a week, and I'm also doing a lot of emails and editing little things here and there mm. and stuff for YouTube. And when I get out of that room after maybe eight hours or twelve hours of one go. The last thing I want to do is play another game in the same room. It's a bit like, I don't know if you were a plumber and then you get of home course. and you want to spend three hours doing this. You just wouldn't, you know, no. you get home, you want to, so I'll chill out watching a movie uh, or whatever, you know, but something other than gaming really. So, um, so what's next? I mean, where do you go from here? Continue well, the That's gaming. the thing, you just don't know. You don't, you don't know. The, the game I play, DayZ, is a popular game and it's just well popular in a, in a niche in a small niche but it came out in december 2013 and it's just hit its all-time highest player base last week mm. so although it's been out a long time it's gradually getting more popular uh they'll make another one at some point or there'll be another game like it and so for now 
I'd like to carry on doing what I'm doing. You know, I really enjoy what I do. I'd like to carry on doing a year yearly fundraiser. I normally yeah. do them coming up to Christmas because for whatever reason, Christmas, whilst it might not be the ideal financial time to do it, it feels like the right time to me to be thinking about other people a bit because yeah. I always feel really selfish at Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but somehow, like spending silly money on kids' Christmas presents, yeah. I mean, you know, like, yeah. uh, but it seems like a good idea. But yeah, what's next is the reality of being a streamer is you just don't know. I could have a channel that's twice the size of mine next year mm. or it could be a quarter the size it's hard to know <laughs> you have to roll with it yeah um for anyone that wants to find you what how can they uh well yeah do we find you on well, online twi on twitch tv forward slash the running mans or the same name on youtube you can find some really lovely daisy videos probably too much swearing though oh dear uh look it's been so lovely to meet you thank <laughs> you so much for coming in it's no uh, been such a fascinating insight so it's been good to meet you thank you thank you you love you bye